the staircase sequence is one of the most iconic scenes I've seen in a long time, and I love the way that Todd uses the staircase throughout the film. In the beginning, as you're more beaten down, you're going up the staircase, and then towards that particular sequence, you're having a triumphant moment as you're dancing down. Mm -hmm. What was it like to shoot that scene? What do you remember about shooting that exact moment, and did the song actually play for you there so you could stay in sync with it? Mm -hmm. um, well, the first thing I remember seeing photos of those steps, and uh, I had been, been rehearsing some of the dance movements, um, but we didn't go to those steps. But, but really the first thing was I had a, a journal, uh, really Arthur's journal, and uh, Todd was showing me the pictures of the, of the steps. We were talking about kind of like trudging up, going down. And I just wrote step after step after step after step and just filled I think, three pages of it. So that was really like my introduction, which, to me before, I, because when you're shooting on location, you don't have a, necessarily have the opportunity to uh, go to the actual location until you're shooting. Mm. And so I didn't know what the experience was, and somehow kind of the writing of that gave me the feeling of what it must feel like for him, kind of day after day, having to ascend or descend those steps. Um, but I think for me, one of my favorite parts that what, why I like that sequence um, is we view in two ways. One, that's the objective reality in which his dance movements are shot in 24 frames a second, and so um, they're jerky, they seem out of sync, he's not really smooth. Hmm. Um, and then we see it in slow motion, and suddenly he appears to be kind of graceful and yeah. locked into this movement. And I thought it was really just a smart way of kind of um, illustrating kind of the objective reality of what's happening and the character's kind of su subjective uh, perception mm. of, of what he's experiencing. Um, you know, to Joker, he's graceful and in control. Um, and the reality is something entirely different. You know, I've seen the film twice now, and on a personal level, I related a lot to the ideas and the idea of why he felt the way he did, because I was bullied a lot in middle school and high school. I used to get beat up, I used to get called names. And as you watch the film, you, you feel for why he feels the way he does. Not that I'm condoning what happens later, but the idea is that you feel it. As an actor, though, I was curious, was bullying something that you had dealt with in your life at all, and do you tap into that? to Because it felt like real. It felt like someone had actually gone through what I had gone through. Mm. First, I'm sorry you went through that. Thank you. Um, uh, I experienced it a, a little. Um, I had. Uh, I grew up in a very, a very uh, loving and compassionate, considerate family, and so my first introduction to going to school and um, being threatened was absolutely fucking shocking to yeah. me. Um, I, I literally couldn't understand what happened or why it was, it was happening. Um, thankfully, I made friends with um, someone in school who was the toughest kid in school, and uh, he told everyone that I was his cousin and leave me alone. <laughs> um, but I was, you know, I was vegan, I had a unique name, um, so I was definitely a target um, mm. kind of early on. Um, but I, yeah, I think what we're, through the, through the research, um, Yes, I really started to explore, because I think the one thing that, that, because he's such an unreliable narrator, it's hard to know what is real and what isn't. Mm. As part of me looks at some of those examples of him being bullied, and I question the reality of it. Yeah. Um, you said, really, some children stole your sign, mm. um, beat you up, and it, it's, it's questionable to, to me. Um, but it is about perception, and it's about the the effects of childhood trauma, hmm. um, and really PTSD, right? Um, it's an overstimulated amygdala. Hmm. Um, it's it's a, an amygdala that is, is searching for and perceives threat everywhere. Hmm. Um, and so that's what I feel sympathy towards when, when, I, when I think about Joker, I view this, this film, hmm. somebody that went through that experience um, whose brain chemistry was altered um, who now perceives threat everywhere, mm. and what that must live like, what that, what that must feel like to live mm. under constant anxiety. Yeah. 
Um, and so that I, I found, you know, in the research, and I think that that informed the character. And last quick thing that they wrapped me up, I, I, I am not going to sit here and ask you how you lost the weight. I think that's a personal thing as an actor and the choice you made. But I find it interesting about the safety of it in the sense of, is there somebody like that's going, hey, this could end up being unhealthy for yeah. you? Do you have that? Like, are you the one judging that? Or is no, this... you work, I work with a doctor. And I'd worked with the same doctor before on a movie I did called The Master. And uh, it's like a very strict, regimented um, process, and you're given vitamins and mineral, minerals that are necessary to keep you healthy. Um, it's just like super restrictive in calories. Yeah, well, I love that movie, 65 millimeter. I shot it with Paul Thomas Anderson, yeah. one of my favorite movies ever, man. Cool. Thank you so much yeah, for this. Thank you. All right, so I think Lawrence is a brilliant cinematographer. My favorite shot in the film, I've seen it twice now, is the moment when Joaquin's character obviously gets into the refrigerator, and the camera's sitting there still. Once the door closes, it gets picked up and moved in. Mm. I thought that was a brilliant decision. Mm. It was almost like we were in the room with them. Mm. Can you talk about the choice of that shot? Well, that shot is actually shot by Jeff Haley, who's our camera operator. Interesting. You know, Larry is the cinematographer, doesn't always operate, but Jeff Haley at that point, Jeff is somebody who's worked with me on probably six movies in a row. He's amazing. He's one of the great operators in the business. He shoots, he did the last few Avengers movies. Yeah. I mean, he's a major operator. So I have a trust with Jeff to sort of feel the moment. So a, a, a moment like that was, was Jeff literally deciding Ooh. to do that. Yeah. But as a director keeping it in. Yeah, well, what, well, I kept it in because, and it's funny you say that because Larry said to me, why are you leaving that in? <laughs> uh, because what Jeff was really doing was repositioning his body because he's holding a heavy camera and that was a long thing. Oh. And he kind of repositioned himself because it was weighing. But I like that moment because of too. what you just said. Yeah, but sometimes there's happy accidents happen. That's what is so fun about filmmaking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, Hilder's score is genius, um, and I know that she wrote a lot of it prior to the filming of the movie because mm -hmm. as you watch the film, there's actually beats where like if, if Joaquin looks up, the bass note will hit as his eye right. hits the screen. Right. Did Joaquin have that on set so that he could be in sync with the way the music felt? Yeah, we never did it like, we played it on set all the time, but it was never like we would move to it like in a scene like that. Mm. That would come in post-production when we would edit to it. But the music for us on set, we played it constantly, was more a mood thing. You know, mm. that, 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 that her music has such weight to it yeah. that we were just playing it all day long. It's a leading set. character in the film. It is. It yeah, genuinely I is. Um, obviously, there's amazing sequences in the film where we see Joaquin like either bent over and you see like bones protruding out. Is all of that practical or is any of that being manipulated no, with visual effects? No, it's real. It's funny. Somebody sent me an article that said, oh, it's, it's a digital effect. And we're like, no, Joaquin just has an odd body. He has some uh, thing that happened, I think, young here, where his shoulder was like um, displaced and then it never Does he have fixed. to do it? Or does no. it, it just happen? Yeah, I mean, if he took his shirt off now, he still has that. But I mean, Wicked. clearly, he when you lose 52 pounds, all that stuff comes out. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But no, there's no digital effects in his in his body. You mentioned the weight loss, and I'm not going to go into all because I know you get asked about it a lot. But as a director, though, as you're directing your actor, do you ever get nervous that he might be going too far or like it's unsafe in the sense of like how skinny he does get as a director? No, but... I like it. I yeah, want, yeah. Yeah, I like it that it was unsafe. That's cool. <laughs> no, 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 I know what you mean. I know, you know what, you what mean. I mean. But, like, but, push it. Let's go for yeah. it. Yeah. But he had a nutritionist. I understand that. But I think it's he just, told you that. That's what he said. Unless oh, he, okay. was he not, is, it not, is that not true? I don't know. I, mean, oh, I, I, no I, I think he was just like eating an apple a day, and that was basically it. That's wild. Yeah. Um, obviously, the the staircase sequence is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Um, okay. And as I was mentioning to you, I think I like the way you use the stairs in the film because in the beginning of the film, he walks up as a beaten man, yeah. and he's just walking up, and then that's a triumphant moment for the character. Yeah. That song that plays in that scene which I won't give away, is, mm -hmm. is a very important aspect to the film. Did he have that for yes. that dance? Yeah. So you're blasting it. Well, we put it in your ear. You know, you can wear an earpiece. Oh, cool. So it was in his ear, almost like the iPod headphones, but smaller, right? So you yeah. put those in your ear, and uh, and he was listening to it. So he was dancing to it, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Now, the filmmaking here is absolutely incredible. I, I think one thing you did brilliantly, among many things, you. was you have, a, you have a very intimate, and quiet story, but epically shot. Oh, Your okay. transition shots when we go out to like the big shots of Gotham, yeah. and then the run down the street shots, right. but then we are so intimately with him. Yeah. Um, I was curious about that idea of going big on those epic shots, but still keeping it intimate. Yeah, well, for me, it was important that the movie feels handmade, which I think is what the intimacy, what you're referring yeah. to. Like, and you, even when you first talked about the refrigerator scene, 
what I liked about when Jeff redid it is we felt like someone was there, and that to me makes it feel handmade. Even the hair dyeing like, scene too. Yes, the following right. around that yeah. room and, and the like underwear. it's out of focus for a second. I yeah. like all that sort of handmade aspect, but at the same time, I like to counter it with the scope of mm. Gotham and like because Gotham, you say the music's another character, but so is the city, yeah. right? And the city is another thing that just beats him down. Mm. And so to show that city so widely in those sort of proscenium shots and that, that you mentioned was an important thing. Like, everything is pounding down on this guy. Last thing, I've seen the movie twice. Okay. His arc is incredible. Um, as somebody who had dealt with bullying when I was a kid, you relate to the things he's, why he feels the way he does. Right. But as you're watching the movie, it, the arc is so specific. Can you shoot linearly, or do you, are you having him? Well, jump in I would and have out? loved to shoot linearly, and I'm sure he would have loved it too. But you just can't because of practical reasons in New is York. Is that tough to jump in and out like well, that? Well, it's just why he's so brilliant. I mean, like we, I think we shot the Murray Franklin Joker on Murray Franklin two or three weeks after we started shooting, which is insane when you think about it. Yeah. Because then he has to go back to being Arthur the next Monday. So, That's wicked. I know. That was brutal. And we were like, I'm like, how's he going to do this? But he's so good. And he, he just took it on. Cool. Well, thank you for having me up. Thank um, you. I'm going to tell you.